Welcome to Leadcast. Let's go. Intriguing. Immediately. He's Without delay. Hello and welcome to episode 374 of the Leadcast podcast. I'm your host, Nick the King Cooper. Joining me, Anna Frost Records. Yo. Cold Blue Basket Sweat. Ah, I'm here. Sorry. I Whoa. The door. <laughs> wow, cool. <laughs> My bad. Um, I thought I could do it in time, but then you were real fast. Oh, it's Flash Gordon. Um, hey, this week we're going to be talking about patch 9.8, uh, Top Karma, some roundtable goodness, a uh, regular cheese pick. I would call this the Craft American Singles of Cheese Picks. Um, the LCS news. Are spreading EU, NA, and LCK because that all happened this week, and a couple emails. But before we get into the the meat and potatoes of the show, Aiden, how was your week? Oh, I'm so far away from my mic. Oh no! <laughs> Why oh, are you boy. doing? This? Why are you guys doing this? Because this is a long distance podcast. We're gonna we're gonna do this show from like seven <laughs> feet away from our microphones. I was closing the door as well. I was like slowly backing up with my headset on to like try to like see if I could get there over in time, and then I heard you go, "Oh no, he's wrapping up." Uh oh. <laughs> God, like I know Nick's gonna be talking for at least three sentences. I can do this. You yeah. know, there's a time where the, there's like an appropriate time for this, and it's literally any time that's not after the show starts. Shut up, dude. Uh, all right. Anyway, Aiden from in our ear. How was your week? Good. I only played Top Karma. <laughs> 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 you did. Guess what our you fucking Medikaiser is. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I, I've had fun. I saw someone post on Twitter about like how he's been playing against like super aggressive tops and he just started playing top karma. And he played against two Akalis in a row at like high diamond or like master. And he like shit on them. And I'm like, hey, that looks like fun. I've never been good at karma. And then I like had a couple rough games, but I feel like I've kind of started to learn it now. And holy shit, it's like the most fun thing in the world because you don't really do damage, but you do more damage than the amount of damage they do to you through your shields and heals. So and you got it's, a lot of money. Yeah, and you get money through Klepto, so it's kind of like you just <laughs> you survive and then split push for the rest of the game, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and then distract them as a 1v5 you. Yeah, uh, and then I played it on my Smurf today. Uh, well, when I say well, on my surf today, I actually I didn't play that on my surf. I played Blitzcrank. <laughs> I forgot that all those games I played today were all Blitzcrank and not Karma. So I lied. Okay. I also played Blitzcrank. Um, I just wanted to mention two games that I played. Do people? So actually, all of my games in general, people fucking high plat, low diamond suck wiener at this game. Yeah, and Honestly, everyone like diamond four is the worst. Like yeah, they're probably I, worse than like old players. I'm gold mm-hmm. too on my account, but I have high MR and Trevor is like plat one on his account or something, and he has like decent MR. So all of our games are like the lowest player is other than me is like maybe plat two players. Sure. Everyone mental booms like four seconds into the game. It's it's <laughs> actually wild. And people like go into lobby with like mental boom. Like the mm-hmm. yesterday we had uh a guy in his account name was Volley, and he goes, I'm playing eighty carry Sona. We're like, oh no. <laughs> Like actual okay. not not AP Sona in the eighty carry role, like eighty carry Sona with like, oh uh, flash heal, oh. right? Okay. And our support locks in AP Shaco, <laughs> and we're like, okay, the game's over, right? Someone dodges that lobby, of course, and we're like, okay, he probably dodged. He's probably just trying to troll to get someone to dodge, right? Get to the next game, the same guy jungle this time. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe maybe he's still like off rolled or something and got like eighty carry. We ended up playing the game. He played uh, jungle Tristana. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys win that game no we did not win that game <laughs> wow and, dude everyone has a mental boom though like uh another good one was uh today we had we we had a uh, we were playing more blitz bottom we were gonna invade so level one we invade i get a hook on their nautilus uh we get him to burn a flash immediately <laughs> our jacks who leveled q level one Oh, flash boy. over the wall into five of them. We already know there's five there. It cues the 300 health Nautilus and oh, dies. And I go, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can't say what I actually said. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that was dumb. <laughs> okay. And he goes, shut the fuck up. You're all muted. <laughs> and 
<laughs> he said, uh, only, shut the fuck up, you're all muted. Only communicate with pings. <laughs> to uh, which, as uh, level-headed high plat players, uh, what we do is, as he's walking away, every single person on our team spam missing pings. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, shut the fuck up, no more pings. And, like, he muted all our pings, muted all of our chats. <laughs> Uh, and we won that game. He hard carried. <laughs> nice. And then, um, <laughs> this is over the course of like five games, all these happened. Then our last two games that we played, play a game, uh, get in, uh, load into lo- load into like game. Notice we have a top tarak with teleport. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Uh, love, he's playing against Jax. He sits in their tri bush. I'm like, oh, he's going to stun him and like beat his ass. He went, uh, top tarak with, uh, press the attack, right? And started Sapphire Crystal. <laughs> uh, starts heal. Uh, auto heal, auto, auto. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's okay. That was all right. I, I think he could have leveled stun. It probably would have been better. Uh, no big deal, though, right? Dies four seconds into the lane. <laughs> Teleports back. Dies again. Tell, uh, walks back to lane. Kills him somehow. Uh, then they 2v1 him and they both died of the jacks. And then we end up winning the game that... Uh, Tark went two and eight and did nothing. He w- had like s- super low kill participation. That's fine. Uh-huh. Lo- get into the next game. It's like same guy. <laughs> oh no. Same exact team. By Hell way. yeah. You know what he does? <laughs> I wonder. Locks in Tark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. And he go- he went. He did better. He went like instead of going like two and eight, I think he went like three and seven or something like that. <laughs> we won again. But it's just like, how do you do that poorly? Contribute nothing into the game and go. You know what? Let's try it again. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Dude, it's actually crazy. Like, over those six games, I had, like, five of these people who just, like, I don't even know. Like, they start the game, like, with the mental boom. It's a lot of fun, though. <laughs> it's actually wild. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th- <laughs> one, more, one more story of, like, instant boom. Do you remember the game you and I played together? Where I was on my silver account. I think you were on, like, your gold five account. We're placed with, like, all plat twos and threes because matchmaking, A. Um, and so our jungler oh, the loses side, yeah. red buff to our Twitch point. <laughs> like, Twitch, Twitch was leashing red, and he lost red buff to Twitch poison. And, like, that happens. Like, it's you fucked up if it happened, but, like, it happens, okay? Like, I'm not going to say I've never, like, accidentally lost it to a Darius bleed or a Twitch poison. But, but Nick, like, if if you were to lose red buff... To your AD carry, would you would you think immediately? I know what to do. <laughs> Nick, Nick, I'm going Nick, to what, cross. Nick, 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 what's your what's, where, what camp do you go to next? What camp what? do I go to? Yeah. After you lose red, so you're still level one. I mean, not me, not a meme answer. Probably like wolves. Okay, okay, you're your, your wolves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to my wolves. You know the safe. Okay, play. okay. So you don't you don't go into the enemy jungler who has a faster <laughs> clear than you. And try and steal their wolves, so that when they finish their gromp, you're just arriving at their wolves at level one with no buffs. That's and they're level two with he, did, he invaded. Not only did he not invade a buff, but he invaded their wolf <laughs> on the side that he started. <laughs> yes, that's what he decided to do. And so then he like he's coming down from the wolves, getting chased by their jungler, and I collapse from mig. So I'm like, okay. Like, this is a level 2 versus level 2 fight, and I was an early game character. <laughs> and then I look, and I see that he's level 1, had already blown flash as I'm going in there against their, like, full HP level 2 jungler, and their mid laner following behind me, and I'm just like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> but that game was, uh, that game was not his fault. Oh boy. He did nothing all game, anyway. So no, he hey, quit right like, after. <laughs> pro pro tip guys um if you lose your first buff don't invade mm-hmm. no because you're level one yeah you you farm your own camps as safely as possible i think there's some merit to trying to like steal their buff like if you're a quick clearing jungler like say if sure. they started yeah. opposite like a, a diagonal on the map if you could like go into their jungle and steal their buff there's a chance you still get double buff right and then you deny them Alternatively, look at how much your autos are doing to the Gromp and make sure that six damage doesn't separate you from the from zero HP. That's what I said. He's like, it's not my fault that I lost my red. I'm like, what do you mean? It's a yeah, it like three damage is. poison. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's six at max rank. 
like <laughs> one damage per stack and it's like come on come on uh anyways yeah. I, I, I fucking love this game <laughs> it's, it's actually like as long as you don't like actually put too much like pressure on winning the games to yourself like up, you, get, you don't get upset that you lose it's a lot mm-hmm. of fun like seeing how these players play they just like lock in whatever they want mm-hmm. Ugh. Nice. what about you nick <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um i did not play as much league i feel like this is a pretty big or a pretty busy i'm sorry uh work or uh, pretty big week work. for nick i i can't talk this week has been so long and it's only wednesday um it's been a very long and busy school week, so I've been primarily focused on that. Uh, but did play a little bit of League. I'm looking at my match history now, and uh, I think mostly mostly ARAMs. We're actually winning ARAMs, which is a very unlike the group of people that we play with. Um, Something's happening. That's not good. But, yeah, pretty uh, pretty fun. You know why we're, uh, you know why we're winning games? Why? I'm fucking right. I was looking at the MMR of your games, by the way. They're back to being completely random. Oh. When, they, when I said this, and no one... You guys look. You guys acted like... Okay, a okay, couple of you acted okay. like I was a crazy okay. person. Okay, we didn't do that, by the way. You kind of did. You, I was like, <laughs> no, I was like, like wow, pulling okay, theories out, it. and you're like... Mm. I think everyone was <laughs> like... like did No one did agreed that. with me. Let's put it that way, okay? <laughs> Some people went, okay... <laughs> Uh, cause when they, when they added fucking the build water, stupid shit map with all the fucking changes, what I noticed was when we finished the game, it said like one win or one loss or whatever, instead of my like 800 ARAM mm-hmm. fucking games. So in my opinion, this was M- fresh MMR based on your rank, based on your like solo key rank. Cause all of our games were actually against good players for the most part. We had the one game where they were all, uh, master yeah, all challenger. challenger. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in ARAM. We all have, like, a bunch of games, so now we have, like, our ARAM MMR, which is, like, mm-hmm. lower than our standard ranked MMR. And I think yeah. that's true, because as soon as we went back to fucking regular, the regular map, dude, games are easier. I Maybe I, I'm a crazy I person. I feel like I, it, I feel like it's true. Riot is, like, this is, uh, what, what can we call this? Something gate. Uh, ARAM gate. ARAM gate. I don't nice. think it's that big of a deal, but... <laughs> no, it's just it's just like I definitely think that was part of the reason why we lo- we lost like what I say we played we twenty ARAMs so we probably lost fifteen like 12, of them thirteen yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a large portion. Uh, but yeah, speaking of ARAM changes, let's talk about a patch in which ARAM changes are inside of them. Ooh, I didn't want to tell you about my week anyway. I didn't want to hear about it. Continue on at your uh, well. Aiden went straight to my week. I did. Sure, he did. Aiden, you break a tradition. But there's no tradition. We just, we just roll the dice every single week, and it always happens to go me. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we just have a, a we have a d20 die where only one side is Nick Cooper and every other side is Colton. No, it's three sided. <laughs> the d20 is three sided. The classic d20. <laughs> How did you get that from? <laughs> I don't know. Aiden, how was your? I mean, Colton knows your. Yeah, it's Aiden again. Aiden, I'm not about the one who asked Colton voice. how his week is. It is Aiden's job. <laughs> um, yeah, so my week, uh, been pretty busy at work. Uh, we're, you know, ramping up for, uh, for an OCC exam here at the bank. So that's, that's a lot of preparation. Good old office of the comptroller of currency. You know, they like to be all like, Hey, you doing all your stuff right? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, but we're going to be real picky. Okay. And they're like, oh, okay. Um, other than that, I've been uh, playing FTL still, a good amount, and locking a lot of ships. Um, not getting as many wins as I'd like, but that's starting to turn up and get a little bit better. I've been uh, watching a, a streamer play FTL, and he's got like currently the world record for like uh, hard no pause, most wins in a row. So he knows what he's talking about. It's it's kind of ridiculous because he's just like like he knows like every possible event and like pretty much always picks like the favorable outcome which is pretty cool um other than that i played some league um i lost my series to d3 um i don't feel like i should have because i was like first game didn't go great i think that was the one me and aiden played together second game we like dumpstered um and i was that was just i was playing in solo queue but like my team just like i i was jungling and like every lane won um, and I was ganking all the lanes. And then the last game, 
I was up like 10, 1, and 4 on Sichuani, and we lost that game. Because we had like no damage. Because like all of our lanes were losing, and so like I would come to a lane and like get kills, or like their jungler would gank, and I would like turn and get two. But then they would just like die over and over, and it was it was a it was a sad attempt to win that game, but uh, al alas, the uh, the blue basket was slain. This time, uh, this time, yeah. I'll just I just need like nine more series, and I'll get through. Hell yeah! Just gotta keep beating my skull against the D three wall. Um, but other than that, we played D and D. I thought it was a pretty fun session. I, I enjoyed mm -hmm. you guys goofing around in that little cave for a bit, making a, a swing out of Alex. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was fun. While well, you guys just decided to goof around, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's most of my week. I didn't didn't do a whole lot other than that. So uh, instead of asking you about your week, Nick, we're gonna we're gonna dive right into the patch. Hell 9. yeah! Because I already talked about my week. Yeah, you did. Um, patch nine point eight is live as of recording uh so uh these changes are in effect and first up is amumu his passive damage is increased his q cooldown is decreased and amumu will now follow enemies hit by q if they move while he's in mid flight so kind of like another latching mechanic like warwick hmm pretty cool i was opening Hold the patch patch notes. Right yeah. now, uh, next <laughs> after is Camille. Amumu is Camille. Her base <laughs> attack speed has been increased by a decent amount. Um, so that'll just make her clear a little bit better in the jungle, and I guess her trade's slightly better in top, but not really a big difference Ooh. top lane. They explicitly do not want jungle Camille. So. Yeah. Top lane Camille only, please. Mm-hmm. Shut up. Um, Cassiopeia, E decreased later at later ranks. Woo! Cost the mana decreased. Cost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Shut up, dude. Why are they buffing I Cassiopeia? It's Good question. Book. Reading rainbow. Um, Fiora, W damage in the slow slash stun duration is increased, and the E mana cost has been flattened at all ranks. Pretty nice changes. Why? You know. Why does that ability need to be even stronger? You know. I disagree. I, I disagree. I think it should just match the, the damage and the slow slash stun duration of the thing she That'd carries. be pretty cool. That'd be so fucking cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would hate it, like, just as much, though. Parry an asshole into yeah, someone? But... Yeah. No, I just, you, I just you get the perfect hate. parry on Malzahar ulti? Mm. The the perfect parry on an Urgot ult and just his chain starts pulling him in. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I I don't know. I, I, I hate that ability so much. But anyway, Nar, his ultimate cooldown has been decreased, so basically every time you're mega, you can ult. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a... But, well, I think... So hear me out. People are like, what the fuck? Nar has a 30 second cooldown on his ult? That's not the fucking like part that matters like that means you can you'll have an alt up for every fight right yep you could argue the other benefit of that is that if you're split pushing you can use it to clear waves which i don't think is that mm -hmm. big of a use um that being said i think the biggest change is the fucking first rank going down from 120 to 90 that's, that's pretty big that's the bigger change that i don't see people talking about like that's 30 seconds off like your alt uh at level six that's crazy mm -hmm. i don't know that seems like that's, the bigger I mean, change to me <laughs> That's pretty much up every time you come back to lane. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like people are only jerking off the 30 second one, which I don't even think matters that much. No, I think that's how it should work. It feels pretty bad to go mega if you don't have your ulti. So making sure that you have your ulti every time I think is like pretty appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, um, Jin also, has some... huge buff to Silas. Yeah, I guess that. Wait. Yeah. Huge buff. Because it's wait. only a one minute cooldown on the Gnar ulti for him. Oh, is it actually? Yeah, because it's double the so it's double the target's cooldown. So if Nars is thirty, double that is sixty. Oh, I thought it was uh, like static. No, it is. It's double their total. Uh, I think it's double their base cooldown. I don't know if their CDR matters because it shouldn't. So if you alt like Nidalee or Jace, is it like up? You can ult them again immediately. Like what if your alt's up? I think there is a. Or is like there a base a, on it? 
base. I think there's a base. Silas Law. I wish I could like check in the the client <laughs> for uh, any information. For relevant, about a... relevant information. It's actually wild. They should. Why don't they just buy the wiki? True. <laughs> I guess because it's there for free. Yeah. So they don't have to spend any money. So it says two hundred. Because then they would expect Riot to maintain it. Minimum of twenty seconds. There you go. Minimum. Of, okay. So twenty seconds for for champions like that. One minute for an R, which is like actually pretty big. Yeah, that's so. that's that's actually really good for him. Um, so does it scale? Sorry, not to not to we're getting into no, Silas okay. talk, but um, does it scale off their l- ultimate level? I guess, or does it scale off? I think it scales off of your ultimate level. So if you're level sixteen on Silas and Nara's level fourteen, you still get the one minute cooldown. I think so. That seems that seems ass backwards, but. <laughs> I mean, maybe it, it doesn't work that way because there's like no way to do it except for actually just getting in a game. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. But I... my 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 only thought, my only reasoning behind that is, if you're level six on Silas, you can steal level five characters ultimate. That's fair, I guess. But like, if you mouse over their ultimate before they level it, it still shows the cooldown. Yeah, I suppose so. But it's not a level one then, right? So they don't have a cooldown for their ulti. Hear me. <laughs> Before they level it, is it based on their ultimate cooldown? What if they have forty percent CDR at level five? <laughs> I don't know. More what? testing like required. A... <laughs> I don't know any of these answers. Uh, don't come to you us for these. Riot. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. I bet the most people don't know that at Riot, though, right? Probably not. Which is why we should work there because it's a job that hasn't been filled. Where's I Where's the quiz master? Where Where's the quiz master to ask us these oh, questions? He doesn't know that either. I know. It's uh, it doesn't. It's, nobody knows because it's not real. Hear me out. A person with that job of just answering bullshit questions that come to their head whenever, like throughout the day, more useful than the person introducing teams to play League of Legends against one another. Full time job, four hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jin, uh, his e trap duration is increased. Traps require traps. Rebib. Traps recharge faster at later ranks. Our damage a multiplier increased and leveled up. Uh, sorry, and level up tool uh, tool tip corrected. Uh, so let's just break this down really quick. His uh, R curtain call change is actually kind of a nice change. I don't think it's going to be that crazy. It's only increasing it for uh, like an extra 0. 0.5 uh, based on the target's missing health. Um, that being said, the E change I think I saw a lot of people talking about. So there's two parts of this change. One is trap duration went from two minutes to three minutes, which I think is actually a really, really big change. Uh, I think it's actually... It's really, really nice. I think the trap recharge rate means absolutely nothing, and people are acting like it does. You never max trap. Trap. I don't see a situation ever where you p- put more po- than one point into trap by, like, The what, only six, thing 14, I, guess. I can think that this matters at is, like, a late-game Baron situation, mm-hmm. where at that point you could be having, like, ten traps down in, like, a bush, and if somebody, like, steps there and you get the W, they just get 100 to zero. Yeah, I just more mean the fact that, like, it going from 24 uh, seconds at max rank to 16 is, like, a big number change, but it, it doesn't affect you for the first, I don't know, 25 minutes of the game? Yeah, right, like, twenty. they're both 28 at level 1, and it goes 27 to 25 at second rank, like... The first three ranks in the ability, it won't really matter. And that's, like, you're rarely going, right, to, like, level 17, 18. Yeah. It's just cool. I still think it's, like, an overall really good change, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Kale. Kale. Based, base attack damage, armor, and attack speed ratio is decreased, and she now ascends based on level and champion rank, or in ultimate rank, and instead of... Uh, Instead of level. People aren't going to take right. Klepto anymore. What are they going to take now? Yeah, you can't take Klepto. Oh, no. Um, well, you can take it. I mean, but... honestly, probably Fleet Footwork. You re- I think they're going to take uh, Airy or Comet. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I could see Comet. Then I feel like, like you have to... Strength. Well, you can't go down the... You have to go down the blue tree then, which kind of sucks on her, though. I don't think it's that bad. Uh, oh, no, you'll have to take Gathering Storm. <laughs> yeah, Gathering Storm's still fucked. And uh, free cooldowns. People or were lower like, movement speed. People are talking about taking uh, Conquer on her. I don't think Conquer is very good on her at all, honestly. I feel like it's like a noob trap for her. Yeah. So, I don't know. I guess experiment what? new things. I wouldn't go Klepto, though. I feel like Klepto was good in the fact that your Klepto is a scaling room where you're getting gold early. But 
it's not good enough by itself. The main reason why it was good, if, for people who don't know, is the fact that you could get uh, elixirs of skill, which uh, give you a, a extra point to put into your ability. So at like level 16, if you've got two uh, elixirs of skill throughout the game, you already have all your points and all your abilities. Uh, for okay. Kale, though, her ultimate was tied to her uh, uh, like ability level, or sorry, her character her level. level. Yeah, her champion yeah. level rather than her ability level. Um, so therefore, if you got two elixirs of skill, you could have level 16 Kale passive at level 14. So it was like mm-hmm. a huge, it was crazy. It was like RNG, what's like the chance on them? Like point whatever. It was really low. But if you got if you got two in the game, which is definitely feasible, I think one's like average, two is like, it happens. Having it two levels early is like an extra five minutes of like your crazy form. It's not, yeah. What if, what if, like, on April Fool's, instead of doing what they did, which was kind of dumb, what if they just said we're reverting the Kale rework, and then they just put a, like, you couldn't pick that character anymore, and it was just a picture of the vegetable Kale? Nice. What do you think? What if Would they killed her, and then you couldn't pick her True, in normal True, and you can't pick her. And you can only pick Spooky Ghost Kale. I mean, looking back, really cool. At the time, kind of lame. I think the idea of, like, uh, how, like, I forget what server it was. It was probably, like, Garena, where you could only play as... China. Yeah, if you could only play yeah, as a, a spooky server. ghost. A ghost yeah. Dink, but that's a, that's a better solution than... It is, yeah. It is. All right. Kane, his uh, E shadow in, his e in Shadow Assassin form has a lowered cooldown. So you can pop uh, off <laughs> even more. Oh, that's this a lot. It's putting it one way. Potentially <laughs> big. It's that's unclear. Huge. Let's talk about what this a lot. I... I play a lot of Kane jungle and I also am known for having never played Rast to like Red Kane. <laughs> um so the, what they're doing is they're making it so originally Shadow well I guess still for Rast and regular Kane, Shadow Step has the cooldown of 21, 19, 17, 15, and 13 as it's scaling. Uh the way it works is when you turn into Shadow Assassin that cooldown goes down to eight seconds flat. This is a huge change for a couple of reasons. First of all, I mean it's massive even if it like even if you like maxed E early. But the fact is you if you're going blue cane, you have to max W. And then Q is still pretty good. So like I think currently, well before this patch with Blue Cane, you would max W, then you'd max E and then Q. But it was mm. like still a hard decision. Now you can go W Q and then <laughs> when you get the, when you get blue cane at however many minutes into the game, your cooldown on your E drops from twenty one seconds to eight, which is yeah. gross. I don't think it's enough to make the character better than Rast, in my opinion. I feel like he doesn't do enough... Like, Rast does almost as much damage as Blue Cane in his tankier and heals. Uh, it's just Blue Cane can, like, pop off harder. So I feel like it's yeah, not right. enough so, to make so him better, but... Blue Cane can, like, super pop off and just, like, blow the game open. And I think, like, I've seen a lot of high-level Canes, like, just absolutely dominate a game with Blue Cane, where, like, they get, like, two kills early... And then suddenly they're like fourteen and one and running around with their mobies, one hitting everything, and like this will just exacerbate that even more by the fact of like that E cooldown is more than halved. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, but I think Blue you need Kane to be really good to do bad. Blue King anyway. Yeah, but I interesting change. I like um, it. Yeah. Master Yi is up next. He's ghosted during his ultimate, so he can walk through minions now. Pog. Can you uh, can you uh, read, please, the official actual name of the change? Patrick Swayze. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Nautilus. Passive root duration <laughs> increased. Q damage increased. Let's make him stronger. Time to reset the counter on Nautilus, Nautilus buff. So, Hell yeah. Colton and I were talking about this a lot, and then I like started researching it a lot. It has an extremely mm-hmm. high play rate and win rate on Korea as a mid laner. Nautilus does. AP Nautilus? It, well, kind of. He's more like, you know, like the t- pseudo tank. Like the Lissandra of Nautilus. Yeah, you know, like the like rallies, like those the health AP items or like the oh, tank AP, AP items. Okay. You know, like stuff like that. Yeah. So it's not like he's a fucking death cap wielding mage, but <laughs> he still does build AP and he has a good win rate. Um, so I don't know if Riot looked into that before they did the changes or they planned these out and didn't really take it into consideration but these are big buffs when he's starting to like gain i guess like tempo on another server yeah. like i think the bigger like obviously the q change is nice having an extra 20 damage level one scaling up to a uh, 40 damage at max rank and then 
uh, an extra little bit of an AP ratio. AP yeah. ratio doesn't really matter for support. It tells for if you factor in the mid thing. But the thing, big thing is the passive. It was originally a uh, 0 0.5 second uh, root on your passive at level one. Now it's uh, 0 0.75 seconds. And that extra like 0.25 seconds is huge on a uh, passive stun, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, all we need is one more character to have like the 3v3 dream team with Nautilus and Udyr. Where you can just auto stun and all get attack speed and keep oh. their entire team <laughs> perma stunned. Mm -hmm. We just need one more riot, one more. They'll never give it to us. Cool. Um, Orn, Living Forge's uh, Forge Fire Cape, Orn. Frozen Fist, and Infernal Mask base stats increased. So, uh, the I guess Sunfire Cape thing is uh, increasing its health by 120. 125 and armor is being increased by 10 frozen fist is getting its armor increased by 30 and infernal mask health increased uh is 200 and magic magic resist increased by 10 i saw frozen fist nerfs already on the pbe though for orin or for for like the item the frozen fist oh uh, the item itself because okay. uh, giving it 125 armor is a little bit crazy i think but but that's just for that's himself, a lot, right yeah. Is that no? It's like for like any upgraded items. No, it's, he can give that uh, to one of each of his allies. Oh, true. Those are just the upgraded items. Remember, you can build them or give them to mm -hmm. your. Yeah, I, it's a little bit crazy. You know, Orn, the the goat character. I don't know. I don't think it's that crazy, but I don't think it's that crazy because like it won't matter until he's like what level twelve. But well, I guess now that they get him for free instead of having to actually spend like a thousand gold on it, it's probably like more of an issue but yeah Renekton base health attack speed growth and armor growth rounded up his Q healing versus champions is increased so I guess buffs for the animation canceling that they removed get out of here decimals we only like whole numbers for this crocodile <laughs> it's a literal direct quote from the patch notes <laughs> hell yeah so yeah, I mean, it's giving him a little bit stronger early game to make up for the uh, what they did to him. <laughs> uh, Sejuani W damage ratio increased, and that's the ratio based on her max health. So that's actually pretty reasonable. Like that's just that's just Quite more nice. damage for this yeah. tanky girl. Hell yeah. Um, singed base health regen and W slow increased. E cost decreased. Uh, so they're just buffing his slow, some base health regen, and then his fling. It's good. I feel like the fling change is the bigger one. Yeah. That costing... He used to cost 140. Really nice. Yeah. More than most ulties. Mm-hmm. Trundle, his Q damage, or his Q bonus damage is increased late, and his ultimate cooldown is decreased. Give him back his good pillar, so you don't have to max it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Z Q damage down, W cooldown up. He's too strong. Nerf. I think he was too strong though, for real. I, <laughs> I mean, sure, it's just like, why Z and why not Ginsu's, Fane, Vladimir, Riven? Shut up, Riven's not a peach on Vietnam. She's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually think Riven's that bad, but well, versus AI. I mean, I don't think so either, but I think she gets banned most of the time. Yeah, yeah, the fact that she has such a high ban rate is the bigger problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, on to items. Build Wonder Cutlass cost is increased. Blade of the Ring King cost increased. Hextech Gunplay cost, combine cost decreased. Uh, so those are just like cost changes, I guess. Yeah, Bremovest, the Grievous Wounds duration is increased to three seconds. I think it's so needed. I, I feel like it shouldn't be on Bramblevest, but it should be on Thornmail. Isn't it already on Thornmail, though? Thorn mail. I don't know. Nope, no, nope, that's the next thing. After after the Storm Razor change oh. and the Cinder Hulk change, then they oh. go back to Thorn Mail. <laughs> Is so it... for Bramble Vest and Thorn Mail, it went from one seconds to three seconds on Grievous Wound. Huh. I think it would have been better if they made Bramble Vest one and a half seconds and mm -hmm. then Thorn Mail three. It should just be one second and three seconds. Or that. Like so you're incentivized to buy it early. I mean, I think right, that they want they they want to make Bramble Vest better on its own. So I think like one and a half, two seconds on that. But then like, it's already, least... I feel like it's already really good for what it does. It doesn't do that it much. Is. I mean, versus for... like Fiora. Yeah, I wish it did more. <laughs> I mean, 
So yeah, of course. But um, but like, why? Real question though. I don't care about their bramble vest decisions. Why the fuck are the items not in alphabetical order or like sorted by anything? Why the fuck is bramble vest and then two random changes then thorn mail? Why are, why is it not bramble vest then thorn mail or completely in alphabetical order? I don't know. It's neither. It's just like they put them yeah. randomly. I'm not sure. So it's like the okay. So it's like the first three are grouped by bilge water cutlass, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Then the next one, the next or by four all, or are by all being cost, they could also be grouped by cost changes, right? That's another way of looking at it. That'd be bad too. I'm um, saying. Yep. But then after Hextech Gunblade, then it becomes then someone else started working on the patch notes, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, these changes have to be in alphabetical order." But I can't go back because that's someone else's work. It is. Maybe they just wanted it here. to spell best because it's Bramble Vest, Enchantment, Ooh. Cinder Hulk, Storm Razor, Thorn Mail, and they want to tell everyone that they're the best patch note maker. Or, or what if they sorted it by cost efficiency? <laughs> I'd believe you it. Do some math, I'd Aiden? fucking believe it. I would believe it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Cinder Hulk. Um, we changed the tooltip in 9.7, but didn't actually apply the change. Whoops. I think uh, it was like one guy that tweeted out that he forgot to do it as well. Yikes. Uh, instead of dealing double damage to uh, minions and monsters, it does triple damage actually now. Pog. That was me closing my door. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Bane closing no. your door. <laughs> Storm Razor. Energized effects increased and slow decays over a longer period of time. Cool. Items still shit on everyone except for Kaisa. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally only good on Kaisa because it works with her passive. Because it just gives her everything she needs. Yeah. Uh, coup de gras um, no longer grants adaptive force for 10 seconds. I don't see why it did. That was such a weird change uh, or yeah. weird thing. Uh, damage to champions is increased, though, to compensate. That's good. Probably a good thing. Yeah. So half good changes. Here's where I want to kill myself. Uh, okay. How long Abyss is back? Uh. War Mog's armor will stay the same. Uh. Rune adjustments, which I don't remember, will stay the same. Uh. No more pirate items. Uh. No more backtrack. No more bands. Uh. And then uh, minion changes. And then more, or I guess less of a poke nerf. And then champion changes for a bunch of champs. What do you hate about this? Uh, that they didn't remove the that fucking poke option. they're balancing the game around ARM. Colton, can you... That, uh, they, uh, that they didn't remove it? Yeah, the they so there's the current thing where in the game, abilities with 900 range, now 1,000 range, uh, deal 15% reduced damage. Colton, can you read the uh, excerpt that I posted in our uh, podcast live chat uh, as to why they decided mm -hmm. to nerf poke? <laughs> Built-in poke reduction is the name of this post. Long range poke on ARAM is extremely powerful and can be frustrating to face since there isn't really a counter to it other than dodging. We're looking to bring down the power of something. It cuts yeah. off there. Yeah, it's just, so it's but, frustrating because there isn't really a counter to it other than dodging. Who, like, kind of like Blitzcrank. Kind of like Blitzcrank. I, I think they should remove him. They should nerf Blitzcrank because there's not really a counter to getting hooked <laughs> other than dodging. Like, who wrote that and thought that was okay? Like, that's asinine to me that you can write. There isn't really a counter to, to poke other than dodging. What do you but, mean? Uh, okay. But I feel like I, I'm completely in your boat. I think this is a stupid change. Just dodge the ability. Yeah. Like, however, I think we are in the vast minority. I think people love this shit. So I think the only real good justification I can say is that. In ARAM specifically, you could get in a situation where, like, there's five characters throwing skill shots at you like crazy. And while if you're good, you can dodge a lot of those, like, it's not fun at that point. Sure. And maybe that's what they're going for. Like, it's not fun sitting under your tower while Lux and Nidalee and Ezreal are just, like, throwing shit at you. And you're like, I guess I'll wait here for 25 minutes until I can finally sustain this. Pick a better champion. Yeah, it's Aram. Why'd you so... pick Trundle? Why'd you pick uh, Tom Cage? It's Aram, so <laughs> just, just just play the game. It's Aram. So that's problem one. Problem two, uh, they removed the fun items, which whatever. There, you could argue that they're just map items, right? Whatever. I yeah, I really yeah, like yeah, the but... items though. They're kind of fun. I didn't feel like they were overpowered either. I didn't like the 
the deathified one i thought it was a cool thing that no one really used but i thought it was like yeah. it didn't affect the game because like i had i think i saw one person use it in all the games i played um yeah. uh, they cha- they kept war mongs the same which we were confused at what they even changed they made it so um the it's based on missing health rather than max health which i actually think is yeah. a really good change that's a, that's a very positive a change. change um Definitely. they removed backtrack which i mean i didn't really think backtrack, backtrack was fun it was fun. Something. It's more the fact that I think Barrier is not fun. <laughs> so I yeah. feel like it was just a better version of Barrier. So it was like better for the game. Uh, rune shot adjustments, whatever, it's fine. Who gives a fuck? Um, bands, uh, that's pretty controversial. I personally don't like bands, but I can see a reason for them. I just didn't like that I'd... add an extra 15 minutes to the champion select. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there should have been bands. You just never see certain characters. And yeah. like, while maybe it's fine not seeing those characters i don't know like who cares yeah they're gonna um, get nerfed anyway <laughs> so then we have uh the 15 minute air i think i personally didn't notice that much of a difference between like the minions and stuff like that yeah, so me it's like hidden enough that i don't go holy fuck we just lost the game because minions got changed or whatever <laughs> that's that's positive right that's that's a good thing uh good good on you guys um poke thing i just talked about how i hated it fucking here's the other one balance changes they're still gonna personally balance every character for air so I think it's good in the fact that, hey, all ARAM camp characters will be uh, good, or you'll have less games where you go, holy fuck, they have Ziggs, uh, we fucking lose because Ziggs does too much damage, right? My problem is the fact that ARAM isn't my fucking main game, so therefore when I'm playing Zed, or like a X character that I play, if I combo them and I don't kill them, I, I should know how much damage my character does, you know what I mean? I shouldn't have yeah. to calculate how much d- damage my character does based on the map I'm playing. So I think the like biggest uh-huh. change like uh, with the old uh, buffs was like a 10% damage increase or a 10% damage decrease sort of thing. Um, that's a pretty big amount if you're like comboing someone though, doing 10% less damage. Yeah. And I feel like Definitely. that fucks with how you play like other games. And I feel like maps shouldn't be balanced independently. That's just that's so fucked up. I think it mm-hmm. makes me not want to play Aram as much though because like it actually fucks with my head with how damage works. I mean, especially for a map like Aram where people are occasionally using this to test out characters that they never would play on other maps. Mm-hmm. Like, I want you to I want you to go down to number seven on the buffs. You see who's there? Uh, Maokai. Why is yeah, what the fuck? Maokai is probably <laughs> the best Aram character in the game. He's I think he's the one of the best Aram tanks, and tanks are already very strong. I think the best Aram character hands down is Yi, right? I mean, absolutely Yi, but I think the best ARAM tank, Leona. Easy. I'm going to figure, figure out if I can do this again. Uh, I was like, so someone on Reddit released a web- website called murderbridge.com, mm-hmm. which was like an ARAM, like, search characters and figure out how good they are sort of thing. Can you guys name what some of the, like, the bottom five characters are in ARAM? Like, bottom five win rates? I was trying to, like, do it because there's no way to actually search them all. Uh, but like it shows currently you or currently right now, currently. like it, like out of so like you're looking for the 138th, 9th, 40, 41, 42, and 40. Sorry, the, the bottom five though, right? Now I'll I'll tell you I where they rank. I wouldn't be surprised if Evelyn was in there. Evelyn is 140, so she's bottom three. How's so yeah. bottom uh, four? I'll check for Udir. I I want to see if you you guys each do five uh five guess or if you should do three guesses. Uh, Udir is rank okay. 86. He's actually pretty high up. Wow. Um, I was able to get them like think. after like maybe twenty guesses, like the bottom five. Okay. Rexai, uh, I think Rexai is pretty high. Rexai is yeah, Rexi eighty three. Okay. Vi, I think Vi is actually really high. Really? Actually, no, no, no. She's, she's low as fuck. She's one thirty. Still not bottom five. Okay. Though. Oh man, almost. Um... We have one, one more each. <laughs> I know two of them. I can't remember the actual lowest though. I'll look, look them up. Ivern? Oh, I, fuck. I didn't even search Ivern when guess. I like, tried. I don't think he's that low. He's 68. I don't think he's that low either. <laughs> what? Yeah. Last one. Damn, this is tough. The hint is they're always uh, melee. <laughs> There's never not going to be melee, yeah, right? That's true. People are just shit then, at the game. I guess I the last Shen's one. Ass. Oh, maybe, I, I, it's probably not, but Volleybear. Volley's actually relatively high, I remember. Uh, he is 21. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you say 21? So I, I, know two, I know two of the lowest. 139 is Zed, 
which I think is at its strong okay. in ERM, by the way. Uh, and okay. 142 is Riven. Really? Okay, I can see Riven. I can absolutely see Riven. Zed is good at ARAM. You just gotta be, like, not garbage at Zed. I just imagine th- Zed having a higher win or a lower win rate than fucking Volley Bear. Yeah. It's like, dude, <laughs> like if there, if there are melee characters, they're probably gonna be low for the most part, unless they're a tank, and then they're higher, yeah. I found, is, like, what I got from it. Oh, fuck, dude, it's wild. It, it's, it was, oh, Katarina, I think it was Katarina. Let me check. Katarina is 141. That surprised wow. the shit out of me. She's, she's the worst so, character in the game? Uh, she, think... uh, just Evelyn, Riven, then one other character. Wow. I think a lot of that is just, like, relatively difficult characters played by people who don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right? Because, like, a That's bad true. player who doesn't know how to use Katarina is going to be way worse than someone who doesn't know how to use Volibear. That's fair. Because, like, you'll just walk in with Volibear and be a, a beefy ball of stats, even if the character is not good. Like... Well played, Katarina is very good in ARAM, but like, fl- like right, like floor ceiling. She's got a high floor and a high ceiling. Volibear's got a very low floor and a pretty low ceiling. But hey, guess what? That low floor is what you're looking at when you're seeing overall win rate and not a breakdown of like plat plus diamond plus, which you really aren't going to get in an ARAM breakdown. Mm-hmm. True. I just thought it was interesting where some characters felt like Volibear being 21 is fucking ridiculous to me. That is yeah. shocking. Like, even trying to find Honestly. the highest one. I think Sona's probably the highest, I would assume, right? Um, probably. Yeah. No, she's number two. Probably. Still. Yeah, okay. either way. So, like, it's, it was, like, a lot of fun to look through them. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, and then we got a couple skins. Galaxy Slayer Z, uh, KDA Evelyn Prestige, and uh, Invictus Gaming skins that all kind of have the same face yeah i i think they're i think that's the best like set of skins that they made for like league winners like i i like some of the other ones more but this one actually feels like a you know like a full like package more than the other one it looks like a team yeah yeah who's the top one is that aurelio i like the aurelio one Mm -hmm. i think they look sick but yeah next week we'll get to talk about the how they're massacring aiden's boy Oh, we're calling. We're calling. <laughs> oh, I don't no. think it's that bad. Really? I mean, I okay. This <laughs> that's is next the, week. That's next week. That's next week. Just, just quickly, it's from the perspective of there's no other way they can do it without making him like he's always going to be OP and competitive <laughs> unless you do this, right? That's fair. That's fair. Oh, okay. But in solo queue, <laughs> yeah, he's fucking garbage solo queue. He's about to be a lot, lot worse. A lot worse. Okay. Um. Five week? Yeah, Medikaiser. Sorry, not five weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Top Karma. I played a lot of Top Karma this past week. Uh, gist of it is, um, hey, you're going to become a tanky mage girl who's really fast, has a lot of shields, has a lot of heals, uh, has a decent amount of damage, uh, and you're pretty well unkillable. So you become kind of like a split-pushing tank, but in the fact that if you get ganked by two people, you just kite them around and kill them. If you get by like three or four people, you just run really fast to your team and then stall until your team gets there. Then you turn on them. Uh, I think it's really hard to learn, but I would recommend anyone who is uh, who, who's interested to try it. Especially if like you play Karma, because I'm fucking terrible at Karma. So I feel like learning her is the harder part of uh, this build. So what you actually do for it, uh, you run Klepto on her, um, taking... Well, Klepto, so first of all, the reason you take Klepto on her is because uh, you need just to, like, farm in lane. So you, like, use Qs, then poke twice, get your gold. Use your shield when people engage on you, poke twice, get your gold. Use your root on them, poke twice, get your gold. It's pretty easy, like, to trade with most characters. She kind of And shits- you're also doing all of that auto-attacking, resetting your mantra cooldown. So yeah. Really, which is huge. Mm-hmm. So it kind of works well with her uh, mantra overall. That being said... She kind of shits on every melee character because of that. You're, you're kind of just like auto poking all game. You have uh, shields to reduce their damage if they get on you, roots to keep them off you, and then your Q is obviously a slow. And then you can mantra any of them to like do an empowered version of it. Pretty simple. In ranged matchups, it's a little bit rough, I think. I haven't played too many ranged matchups. Most top laners, I think, are melee for the most part. I, think, I feel like Gnar would be rough, Jace would be rough. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been banning Kale every game because. I was banning Kale more for the fact that I feel like I could shit on her in lane, 
but she's also doing the same thing of like just trying to sustain until she turns into a real character so i feel like she kind of outscales you so i would just keep banning kale maybe it's not that bad of a matchup but fuck i feel like if you get the late game you're just gonna get shit on because of it yeah probably so ruins wise you're going uh your klepto in inspiration tree pick up your free boots your biscuits to keep you in lane for longer then your cosmic insight because you want that 45 percent cdr late game you want to go down sorcery uh you can pick up either you i was going monoflow and transcendence for a while but then i started i switched to uh nimbus cloak and transcendence because whenever you use your mantra you Ooh. get your uh movement speed for a little bit so it kind of makes you faster i'm not sure which one's better out of those two uh i de- definitely would go transcendence though because like a lot of my builds i would have like 70 percent cdr like total so getting that extra like 60 ap just from like overcapping your cdr is i think pretty important because all the items you want to build are going to be items with cdr on them mm-hmm. getting to yeah, your actual build uh if you can i had one game where i didn't do it because i was kind of getting shit on uh i like so you start doran's ring uh with two pots just to get you through lane gives you mana gen health ap then you're your build you want to go in a perfect world is ROA first because that will scale you into late game, gives you sustain in lane, gives you AP health mana. Pretty obvious. So Aiden, here, here's here's a thought for you, and I think that you might want to consider this. I think that if you can, you just get the catalyst, and like if you're in an AP matchup, you go Abyssal Mask, and if you're AD, you go into your Glacial Shroud item. Because I think that it'll it'll be just as strong early with that sustain, but you'll be even tankier. It'll be that 10% CDR and like 10% amplification on your base values. I think it's going to do more for you than like plus like 100 AP. That's fair. Yeah, I'll try that. Uh, I definitely think that sustains the more important part of it. And I, I do mm-hmm, think there is some merit to the scaling of Rod of Ages though. Yeah, I just, I, I think that the Abyssal Mask will let you get to your like bully point faster. So I mm-hmm. think I think it'd be a good thing to try. Yeah. Uh, I guess continuing on with the build. In a perfect world, you're against an AD, AD melee. AP melee is a little bit harder because then you have to go items like Abyssal Mask. Um, your Visage is still good, but you have to like build more AP, uh, more Magicus items, which don't work as well with your perfect world build. In AD melee matchups, though, it's great because you can go right into stuff like Iceborne Gauntlet, uh, Bramble Vest. Those uh, I, I always go tabbies on her when I'm in an AD melee matchup. But after you get those three items, like you have... I don't know, like 170 armor or something like that. And then you can go into like Spirit Visage. Uh, and then I can, you can round it out with like an AP heavy item if you really, really need to. But your core really is, well, at least my core, you could alter it based on what Colton said, was ROA, Iceborne Gauntlet, Boots, usually Tabby, sometimes Merc Treads, uh, Bramble Vest, Spirit Visage, AP item. And obviously, if you're an AP lane, you maybe switch out that last AP item for an earlier uh, Abyssal Mask. But overall, like it, it just makes you so you have like super high resistances, lots of mana, so you never run out of, uh, of mana when you're doing these crazy uh, trades. And the bigger part is that you are overcapping CDR, so your abilities are on super, super low cooldowns. So you just become a split-pushing monster. If anyone tries to engage on you, you just disengage. You queue them, slow them, walk away, keep poking with autos whenever you can. They get on you, you root them, walk away. Uh, they, they start doing damage to you, you shield, you walk away. Obviously, the hard part of playing this build is trying to manage when you're going to monitor an ability. It's kind of like... It, it, it's like hard for me because I always fuck it up. I'll be like, Mo, my only ability up is Q and my ult's up. Well, I'm going to mantra my alt. Whereas a lot of the time you want to be saving your mantra, uh, mantra ability for your W or your E. If you're low, you always mantra your E because it gives you 20% plus your AP heal. Your W. You're sorry, your W. Shield. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you mantra your like root, your, double, uh, your W. Um, whereas like earlier in the fight, you want to be mantraing your... Does your Is your mantra E... How much bigger is your mantra E than your mantra... Um, I don't feel like it's that much bigger because it's the AoE. Yeah. The fact that it gives AoE and I think the movement speed is significantly more. I don't think the shield value is terribly stronger when you mantra the E. I think it's like 20% or something like that. Yeah, I feel like I don't use mantra E that much, but it's crazy in team fights. Like, once again, Mm -hmm. uh, when I played with my pre-made 5, I thought it was a lot easier because I'd have fights where I'd have the entire enemy team eventually get on me and I'd just run them around like animals and then... I'd run them around for what, like 30 seconds, and then my team would show up. I'd monitor our entire team with uh, my uh, E shield, and we just run right through them. So 
it's it's so much fucking fun though it's a lot of micromanagement though of like using abilities trying to get in as many autos as you can i really think the thing you have to work on if you don't play karma though is trying to not immediately use your ultimate on whatever abilities up that i do that so often it really fucks you you really need to be using it on your w as much as you can to stay alive i kind of want to be i, I kind of want to give it a shot because I, I play a good amount of karma um, it's so much haven't fun done dude. too much tank karma top but yeah I, I might give it a try i think Karma's you get bullied so for so long and then as soon as you start shitting on like a ribbon or something that's just really really aggressive by just walking around and poking them it's so good they can never get away from you too and i'll win i'll win the early game too I mean, the early game is not actually bad, like your first base, but after that, after they base once, it's a little bit scary. Maybe but, if you're not me. I'd recommend it, though. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Round table. Talk more. What shape is the table, Aiden? Uh, circular. Uh, nice. Um, so last week's question was, what should Riot do for April Fool's next year? Uh, Josh said, have every skin unlocked when you're in champion select, but when you play, you have, uh, sorry, you only have the skin that you last played with. <laughs> nice. I think that's funny. Uh, Michael said, a vanilla mode, I think that's what it's called, with all original slash old assets. That would be the coolest thing that I've heard. Ooh. Um, Alex said, mirror map summoners, Rift, which I didn't know what it meant, but the way I envisioned it, Nick. So it's not, I didn't envision it actually at all like what he said. I just took his idea, then wanted a point where I could just talk for longer. Um, okay. What if... <laughs> They made it so there's four, like it's a, it's a 5v5v5v5. Five e five e five e five. Ooh, that'd be sick. Like they just they just copied the map and put another like <laughs> row on it, you know what I mean? Like another <laughs> like cross awesome. it. Like it would be so much fun because you wouldn't know what the fuck to do, <laughs> right? That's why it'd yeah. be fun. There'd be no real meta. you just all gang up on one person or something. It'd be, it'd be great. I think it'd be like such a great game mode. Um, it'd be like I feel like it'd be like Pummel Party. You realize someone's winning, and then you're just like, "All right, everyone, pick on the, that team." Yeah, it'd be like <laughs> team fights, dude. That'd everyone be awesome. just be killing everyone. <laughs> it'd be so sick. Um, from our Discord, uh, Milf said uh, something to do with the all chat again because that's just the best April Fools ever. <laughs> uh, Pards Bay said going uh, along with what was with what was said, maybe just have something like a preset 500 compliments, and then when you all chat, it's just like wow, nice play, or you're uber good and stuff like that. I feel like that's better than the all chat stuff they've been doing. Um, uh, Mega J Tion said they switch AP and AP AD without telling anyone. anyone so Viger passive scales with AD mastery builds death cap and auto attacks do ap damage i guess corky's passive would convert ap into ad suddenly you see a darius with rabidons and viger with yomis i feel like that would be so much fun like they just straight change them and then it just like fucks uh -huh. everything it'd be so cool um dr otter said i would like to, uh i would like it if for april fools riot made a special game mode and gave almost no details about it ship it straight to live servers and have people queue up to, and try to play it it would literally be dra draft pick except for you don't play who you picked and it doesn't matter who you banned because in the end you play with whatever character you have the lowest mastery score for that'd be fun true <laughs> that'd be actually be pretty sick <laughs> yeah i kind of like that um so this week's question i don't have a better way to rephrase it yet but uh what do you want to see for uh what what do you want to see from riot in the form of merchandise okay so mm. I'm, I'm checking it now because i have an answer but i just want to make sure that they're not doing that already yeah yes and i don't think they are i wonder if we have the same answer is yours an obvious one that they're not doing yeah okay <laughs> but i think we might have talked about this before maybe okay so i don't i don't see it on here sell me the fucking splash arts as posters <laughs> dude. like what the fuck that's literally free money i would buy so many posters you know, for a fact, they have the high what resolution the of all the fuck? fucking art, too. Like, it's, they've made because, it. Because they upload it to the fucking, uh, uh, what is the thing? The, like, LL Universe or whatever. Yeah. That you can just download them onto your computer from. Ugh. That's my exact answer, Nick. Fucking mm -hmm. Jesus You guys Christ. literally make it. You you have the high resolution shit. Just, it's there. It's there. Oh, my God. Charge me $15 for a poster. I'm buying fucking 10 of them. It's not like it's hard to implement on their storefront. You just fucking, no. like, you don't have to have fucking 700 listings for every single skin in the game. You just go, hey, I want a poster. Character skin. Yep. Just Ooh. like you do in the fucking shop. Just oh. like you do in the shop in-game. Free money. Plus, they are, okay, okay. The most infuriating thing, they have posters for sale. I... 
<laughs> yeah. Jesus, I think they, they feel like that's too cheap speech. of a thing, but a lot of people would buy those. Yeah. I it, just want to buy fucking cool splash arts. And it, it's weird, Nick. Like, they even have some, like, really well... Like, of some some are just the character, right? Which is still cool. Like, some people would still buy a lot of those. But they have some, like, cool ones, which are, like, multiple character ones and shit like that. They have so much, they have so much cool art in the game. Let people buy shit. Yeah, dude, if you just... Okay, so you fucking love IG, right? That's your team. Yep. You buy, like, six different posters and line them up with each other, like, where they correspond to in the in the splash art? Yeah. That's so sick. <sighs> or they just sell, like, one massive poster. Yeah, I'm sure they can all. do that as well. It's like... I mean, yeah. Free but money. They, but the options are there. Why are you not doing yeah. it? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what got me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had to make sure that they didn't have that already. I know. After that obvious answer, <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add one more poster that I think would be cool if they had. If they had like a map of Runeterra as like a nice That'd like big cool. poster, or but if they had like it in a year and a half. So true. They're gonna they're gonna keep changing <laughs> it. Um, other than that, I think like there are definitely like certain like character skin like pieces of clothing that they could totally make as just like actual things. Um, right, because they already have, like, the clothing section, so, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example where, like, one of the characters is just wearing, like, pretty normal clothes, but, like, distinctly that character. Like, Jack of Hearts, Twisted Fate. Like, if you could buy that suit on Riot Games, ooh. That'd be pretty cool. Like, I, I it, it'd be really custom, and I don't think a lot of people would buy it, so, like, I don't think it would actually be a good business decision, like, the posters, but I that's that's one of the things that came to mind was, like, that'd be cool if I could, like, buy that. Yeah, I, just I have... sell us the weapons. <laughs> sell me guns. Yeah, I have a good one. <laughs> sell me rocket launchers. Uh, yeah. Do you got? Uh, hold on, I'll link you to their site just so you guys don't have to type it in. Um, go here. Oh, I like your formatting. Thank you. Uh, go here. Go to okay. um. Uh, we're on. Sorry the, if you can hear our. Uh... We're on uh, Riot Games merch. Uh, yep. By the way, dot com. Uh, go to statues. Under collect- uh, collectibles. Collectibles, statues, okay. Okay, and then click on any one of the ones that say unlocked. Like Zad unlocked, Echo unlocked, Katarina, un- Katarina unlocked, et- okay. et cetera, right? Katarina unlocked. Yeah, and then you're going to go to the images, and uh, okay. like on the left, see how it shows Echo then on the left? Yeah. And then click on the one with the box. Okay. I want to buy the box. <laughs> but not the... I fucking love that box design for all the unlock series. They're so fucking yeah, they're good, really dude. Cool. Like, if I, I think... remember, um, if I remember, the Echo one looks the best. The Echo one's my favorite. But like, yeah. lining up all, the... I just want to buy the boxes. Sell me the box for like ten dollars. <laughs> I don't want the statue. I want the sell box. me the box art as a poster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look how good the box looked for that. That's the best looking box I've seen. That's pretty cool. Okay, I know they're not going to do that. But anyways, no. uh, tell us what you guys want them to sell in yeah, the Yeah, what do you want to give Riot please Games just, your dollars for? Please say something other than posters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can have us up on Riot, Facebook page. Like... At Leadcast, send us an email, mail at com. Come into our Discord and post in our roundtable section. Yeah, cool. Do you think Riot's going to give us a, a kickback for this free, like, uh, no. this no. free advertising survey? Are make they going to sell us posters? No. Make me head of marketing, no. please. Yeah, we'll ask. We'll, we'll sell out our, our audience to get answers on what people would buy from your game. Yeah. <laughs> True. All right. Cheese pick. This one, the, the Kraft American <laughs> single of cheese picks. The not really a cheese, but kind of cheese. And people will recognize that it's pretty cheesy. This is the one, the only, the spicy, regular AP Nico. You sh- you just play her like she was intended because she's been way better as an on hit carry for too long and they keep nerfing it and it's still better that way and just play her like she was actually made to be played. We're Fuck taking you, him, we're fit. taking Nico back. Yeah, your team will probably be like, "What are you doing? That's not how you play Nico." So she's very fun. Yeah, that's that's the cheese pick. Just just oh, yeah. play her how she was meant to be played. Make Nico great again. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's talk about the LCS um, across the world and, and the some LEC of the results. and the LCK. Yeah, so in, here in NA, Team Liquid beat uh, TSM three two, mm-hmm. reverse swept them. Silver scrapes. Oh, they reverse sweep. I I, I, I watched did. them swept. go down two games, and then I 
They reverse fucked them. I, I watched them go That's down to the game, series. so I just stopped watching. Did they did? It turns out um, Double Lift is really good, and Zven made a lot of money from that series from Steve. <laughs> he trolled that last <laughs> game so fucking. <laughs> But Col- Colton, I think you would appreciate it because, like, uh, there was one team fight. I'm not sure you, you might have saw it on Reddit. There was a team fight that was like a, I don't know, forty-five second minute long team fight that was probably one of the best LCS team fights I've ever seen in my life. Like the most hype one, and there were zero kills mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, Ooh. that was nuts. Okay, I need to watch. That, it was man. like that was that team fight alone is like fucking wild. <laughs> I I want to say it was like game four, game five. Yeah, it was one of the last two games. But holy, it was just so good. <laughs> yeah. There weren't a lot of, like, misplays, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it it just kind of, like, everyone was playing so well that even another player's good play couldn't outdo your own good play. Yeah. Which is weird. Um, In LEC, we had... Well, there's two series. Um, True. Because... The semifinals and then the finals, right? Yeah, because Origin 3-1 Fnatic and then G2 3-0 to Origin. (laughs) We're like, holy fuck, Fnatic looks really good. And then... First of all, okay, going back to the quarterfinals, G2 3 0's Origin, people are like, yeah, Origin's shit compared to G2. And then a Fnatic 3 1 Spice, and like, people are like, oh, it's going to be Fnatic G2 finals. Mm-hmm. And then Origin 3 1 Fnatic, you're like, oh, fuck, <laughs> what's going on? And then G2 3 0 Origin. So it's just like stomps kind of like over and over and over again. We saw the classic, Nick, that we yeah. kind of predicted the team beats team, team one beats team two. And then Team 2 beats Team 3, and then Team 1 has to beat Team 2 again in the final. True, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, imagine if G2 loses that. Uh, they'd be so mad. Mm-hmm. But yeah. It ended up not being that way. G2 looks very good in EU. However, we'll have to see how that translates to uh, international play. Colton, did you watch any of those games? Um, the finals, the G2 origin ones? I think I, only I bring it up a little bit of it. And they just I, stopped, I right? told you to link part of it because they played... Pike, Morgana, bot lane with Zaya Rakan yes. into Tariq Sona. Yes, yes, I watched that game. It was more interesting because they got fucking their jungler to play Morgana bottom. Yeah. They're, they're mid to play <laughs> Pike support. Yeah. <laughs> like, they don't give a fuck. Like, they, they were, they're so much better than, um, uh, than Origin. Europe. Uh, yeah, then I guess the rest of Europe that <laughs> yeah. they just played like they just styled on them. Like, they, what yep. was the other goofy thing they played? They played one more goofy thing. Uh, they played was it uh, Heimer or was that a uh, different series? Fuck, let me look it up. I don't remember. I thought Origin, the other two were like G2. pretty standard. They had like another, goofy but I also thing. turned it off after game two because it was over. Uh, spring finals. Is this it? It's impossible to find shit from Reddit. I think it's it. No, it's game two thread. Why? Why? When I Google it, does it give me the game two thread? I found it. Uh, they played. Let me find it. it was like, there was a more goofy thing. First game they played standard. Oh, the first game they played Sona Tark. <laughs> um, sec- yeah, yeah. And then the second game was the mm-hmm. Pike Morgana. Yeah, Pike Morgana thing. And the third game. And the third one was standard, right? Was it standard? Yeah, it was standard. They fucking styled on them again. Oh, they- yeah. oh, the third game. That's what I wanted to say. They fucking like uh, quad flexed on them. In the champions yeah. like because they picked Rise, who could be flexed mid top. They picked, um, actually, I think it's only triple flex, but still, it's a Rise can be played mid top. Uh, Jarvis, I mean, uh, sorry, Jace can be played, uh, top mid, and then we've seen a couple of games of AD carry this season, and then Nico can be played top mid AD carry. <laughs> yep, what a fucking good draft just to fuck with people, though. Mm-hmm. They also won that game in 18 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, 51st fastest game of uh, all competitive history. Fucking nuts, dude. G2 is very good in Europe. I hope this, I kind of hope it translates well to international stage because historically that hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. I hope they do well. Yeah, typically Western D-O-N-2. teams that stomp don't, don't do a whole lot. Uh, I mean, specifically G2. Yeah, G2 true. and 8. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I, I feel like but. SKT is going to be so much stronger at MSI, though. Oh, God, yeah. So really that good. brings us to our last one. Uh, I Were you awake for it, Aiden? I watched it, yeah. I watched it in bed. Okay, yeah. We were all awake for it, watching it live. I kind of feel ripped off because it was a it was a 3-0, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, 3-0, SKT. The games weren't particularly close except for game one, I think, and that's only because Clid can't smite. Like, his smite was disabled or something. Tarzan's but, really boy, good, Boy, SKT though. looks really fucking good. Also, why was why was Griffin picking Talia Pantheon? Okay, so... When, and, but also leaving up Ezreal. 
Yeah. So like the first game with the I was like, holy fuck, this draft's wild. Uh, in the yeah. fact that they got they played Talia eighty carry Pantheon support, and then they they also got fucking uh Silas out of the draft, which I haven't seen Silas in competitive forever because he's been perma banned. Yep. And then they lost. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, that fucking Talia Pantheon did nothing into that lane, probably because they left open Ezreal, like you stated. Um, and then which was what was weirder, Nick, is because they got fucking dumpster. That that lane did nothing. And then in the game three when they're like at match point down two games, they pick it again, <laughs> and yeah. it did even worse. They, and they, like left they over must have Ezreal. had good results. I feel like it did better in game three. You think so? I feel like they did nothing I think better in game three. It's I mean, they still did nothing. It they was got a the, garbage. The first uh, game, I felt like all they did was they got the one Olaf kill like early, and that was it. Yeah, but I think game three they did less than. That. That's fair, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but either way, they left but, open Ezreal, uh, which was weird. After that, I don't know. So I feel like Ezreal's the one AD carry you can't leave up if you're going for a kill lane. Mm-hmm. Like, you can kind of get away with literally any other AD carry, but Ezreal's just going to farm with Q. He's going to he's gonna fucking um, buffer his, his blink. Like, there's no counterplay to that. I'm looking at their bans, though, Nick. Like, what do you ban? So, like, both games where they picked that, the, 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 Teddy picked it, like, first like round, so you only got the three bans yeah, to yeah. counter it. Their their other three bands were uh, Jace, which I maybe you could leave out. I'm not sure how, how powerful Jace is in competitive right now. But the other two were Tom Kench Morgana, which I feel like also completely shot that down. Yeah, I guess Tom Kench Morgana, you have to. But then, I'm not sure. At least in game three, ban Ezreal. Like ban Ezreal instead of Jace, Jace. Yeah, yeah, change something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was still fun Definitely, though. Uh, it's cool seeing Faker look good again. Yeah, for sure. I feel like a lot of it was uh, Chovy playing not well. I think like people like yeah. fucking act like he's Chovy's not like the, one of the best mids in the world right now because of that performance. He just choked. He had like a really bad performance, but mm-hmm. it doesn't mean he's that he didn't fucking player. demo all split. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the MVP for a reason. Yeah, it's fuck, dude. I don't know. People like act like he's just was over. He, he, people act like he's only good because Tarzan is his jungler, which I don't think is the case at all. I mean, I'm sure that helps tremendously. Yeah, but that's not. That's not the the only. That's like, not the reason he's MVP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's kind of like the the championship week roundup. We've got uh, MSI coming up, where I believe NA has to play as a wild card. Uh, they're but I like don't have any doubts that they'll get out of it. They're in the, like this position again, where there's like the uh, knockout, right? They're in like yeah, they get the buy. So like them and then Taiwan get the buy. They're gonna. Mm-hmm. There's I. They're, they will get through. It doesn't even matter. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and then but then they'll be disappointed. Probably drop back to fourth place because I don't see them beating SKT. I think they probably lose to uh, Invictus is representing LPL, right? Uh, yeah, no, fucking what's it? It's what's it called? Um, fuck, let me look it up. MSI lol. Oh, oh, I can't. I fear. I, I is saw it JDG. I, mm, let me look it up before I speak. This is one of those. Oh, yeah, but. It is. And then G2 looks better than Team Liquid. Oh, China hasn't been decided. That's why. <laughs> but it's IG versus J- JDG, right? It is between... Uh, yeah, JDG or IG. Yeah. And that match happens... Yeah, so. <laughs> why is... This weekend? Uh, is it not... The third place match happened yesterday. When does the... Oh, finals are Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, that'll be exciting. Yeah, I mean, Tim Lucas probably the fourth fourth best team at the tournament, but <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> like not even fourth place memes. Um, yeah, it'll be exciting. It'll be it'll be exciting. So let's get into mail fight. Where first up, we have an email from Benjamin. And Benjamin, I'm gonna apologize right off the bat uh, that I I summarized your champion because it was a little long and it had a lot of numbers and. It is my personal belief that numbers don't lead to a, a, a super good podcast. Um, so I tried to do it to summarize it as well as I could uh, and kind of maintain the the kind of core of the champion. So here it goes. This is from Benjamin. He said, hello, King, Blue Baskets, and Frozen Rock Hearts. I'm a fan of your podcast, and he's I've been listening for the last two years. I'd like to say thank you for making this podcast It is as it is typically an enjoyable part of my week. How that makes to, one of to us. Listen in. <laughs> you guys rock, <laughs> and please keep doing your thing. I play mostly jungle. Starting, uh, started playing early season seven. His uh, gamer tag is 
Vincenzo or Elephant Bird. And he's Silver uh, Trash, if you care to look him up. I have a good time, though. Being a jungle man, main, I have murdered thousands of jungle mobs over my tenure as a jungler. I've had moments of existential dread after getting team wiped and losing, or even whilst winning a game, where I've thought to myself, must these beautiful creatures be endlessly murdered, just so that my toxic comrades and I may vanquish this giant crystal? Surely there is another way. I'm not vegan or anything, I just had thoughts of making an alliance with these jungle mobs instead of murdering them. So I submit to you a new jungle champion, Groovy Jungle Love, the Herald and Groovy King of the Jungle. Uh, this is a very Colton champion. I'm going to say that right off the bat. Yeah, because he's so groovy. He's groovy. Uh, you should hear the description, which I will now do now. Uh, groovy Jungle Love, further uh, referred to as GJL, is a lion with a sweet multicolor mane. And it is the groovy king of the jungle. He has tie-dye bell bottoms. And I assume no shirt is wasn't listed. Uh, his Q is for the love of the jungle and this is kind of like the core of his entire kit he drops an aoe area i guess the aoe uh that charms champions after some time and if you use it on a jungle camp he gains control of the large uh the large unit of the camp for a few minutes uh and while under his control he, the camps grant him and nearby allies different buffs so he said like wolves would give attack speed um, wraiths would give magic resist uh, golems would give armor blue buff and red buff would give different like stronger variances of, of those and uh, it works on epic monsters but only if he solos them he can't have any help from anyone else uh, and you would just around. troll me. I would just be <laughs> soloing the dragon and it would be like 100 HP and you'd hit it once and I wouldn't get it. Absolutely, every time. Uh, you can only have three camps at a time and dragon and baron count for two of those uh, of those champ of those little creatures that you can control. His W is Contagious Groove. He shoots a ray that charges the enemy, uh, charms the enemy champion's hit uh, and the amount of enemy champions that you can charm scales with level, your champion level. His E is Groovy Love Leap. You gain move speed, and you can jump to enemies or allies, kind of like a good repositioning tool. And then his ultimate is Can't Stop the Groove, uh, where you randomly summon five jungle creatures, which exceeds your limit, to join your love squad. Uh, and then passively, nearby al his passive is nearby allies heal over time, and this healing scales with the number of creatures in his love squad. So kind of like a functional, like functionally Ivern, but different. If that makes sense, um, and yeah. that was uh, what he submitted. What do you What do you think, Colton? I definitely think it sounds interesting and like it'd be fun to play. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have like a question the charming for you. jungle camps. Yeah, I got I got a question for you. Okay. All right. So he's wearing bell bottoms, right? And he's a lion. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's a, he's a lion. So do they go halfway up on all four <laughs> legs, up. or do they go just up the back to like the middle of his torso? <laughs> I would assume he'd be a, a bipedal lion and that they would be wearing his normal pants. Okay, okay. I just wanted to check. I just wanted to make sure. Just imagine, like, Ivern, but a lion. Okay, okay. That's what can... I'm picturing. I'm, d I'm down for that. But uh, thanks, Benjamin. Glad to, uh, glad to hear you enjoyed the podcast. We plan to keep doing it. And uh, appreciate your uh, groovy jungle love champion. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Pobomo. No, nope. this is spikes. Oh, I skipped right past them. My bad. You sure did. For next April Fools, this one's from Speedy Spikes, by the way. For next April Fools, I think it'd be wild if Q W E R <laughs> and D F bindings would swap every two minutes. Players would have to adapt their combos. Trying to smite Baron, nope, you flashed. Want to zillion ult a teammate? Nope, you sped them into their death. <laughs> Or what if skill shots were inverted? Gotta aim backwards Whoa. to hit skills. Wait, that'd be so funny. That'd be so funny if they made like skill shots backwards. I feel like Zoe would be impossible to play. Like they'd have to like <laughs> limit the game to characters that are like primarily skill shots mm -hmm. or do something like that, but oh that'd be so funny. That'd be very fun. The the the, the long range NAR snipers would be legends. <laughs> True. Uh, thanks, Feedy Spikes. Next is from Pabomo. And he said, hey, guys, I reckon that Riot should make it that when you enter Champ Select... Oh, this is for April Fool's. 
that when you enter champ champion select, everyone in the game has the same champion. Imagine ten Yasuos or Zoe's in every sing in every single game. I think that's such a good idea. Like, I just want to play like ten Alistairs and just boop slam ten times in a row. Hell yeah! <laughs> just pile in, or just a Blitzcrank, but there's ten, <laughs> ten of them. I'm like, just I'm just imagining like the the ten Alistars in a game and like one team starts going in and they like run out so the other Alistars start piling in and it's yeah. just like no you're all stuck nothing now nothing can hold me nothing can, nothing can hold me back you're not trapped in here with, uh, <laughs> I mean they've done I'm that not before. trapped in here with you what's up Aiden? they did they've done that before right they had uh, all for one mirror match yeah did they I'm pretty sure they I did. think so it's just ridiculous though I just feel like they don't. Why haven't they like? Well, they haven't done game modes in a while because they're like working on getting, um, uh, what's it called? Clash working or crash Clash. working? Um, yeah. But fuck, dude, I miss game modes. I even miss like fucking Poro King and shit. <laughs> oh, you know which one we don't miss? Ascension. Next is Siege. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, Pavamo. Next email from uh, Brian. B Road. B Road. Did a bit of jungling this past weekend and noticed something. The bot lane was giving me leashes where the camp was getting down to two to 300 HP range. This was pretty cool since when it's red, I was able to immediately go up and invade. I was playing Volibear. I kept getting a level two flash from the enemy jungler. When I made a carry, I leave shortly after the minions hit lane so I can get all the minions in the first wave and use level two power spike. Am I an asshole and leaving my jungler early as an AD carry? Or are these rando AD carries just really nice? Also, just wanted to remind everyone about this awesome jungler video from Bad Minister. Bad Minister? I think that's. Nope, Bad Minister. Bad Minister? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, King of the Jungle. He was the one who did, like, the very start of the Cypher a long time ago. Along with mm -hmm. uh, Cody POV and. Collective? I feel like there was one. Yes, Collective. Mm -hmm. And I think Kayori is in this one, too. Yeah, it's not if you bad. could. If you want to uh, just real quick uh, click on that link and then look at the name of the channel. <laughs> did he did he give it to us wrong? It is bad minister. Bad administrator, you're right. I was right. I was like, you're I'm right. pretty sure it's bad administrator, not bad minister. You're right. <laughs> um. Anyway, so like the AD carry and support, I think ideally should leash as long as they possibly can, without losing minion gold. Like, that's how long you stay, is as long as you can without giving up any XP or gold. So, what is that, real talk? I'm going to hit it one time, and then anything beyond that, you're welcome. Yeah, let's, that's the Nick Cooper method. Mm -hmm. um, so ideally, like, depending on who your jungler and AD carry and support combination is, that might leave it at 100 HP when they leave. It might leave it at, like, six 700 HP if you have a really slow clear. But they they should not be missing minions, experience, or gold to stay in leash for you. If they're doing that, it feels okay as the jungler, but they're gonna yeah. lose lane for it. So yeah, like that's how long they should stay is long enough that they do as much damage as possible without losing XP or gold. I like to leash on Jin because then you know exactly the moment when you should be leaving. You hit that fourth shot, I'm out. Yeah, you just leave. You're out of there. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Uh, and the last email is from Rondald McDonald. Uh, and he said, hey, guys, first of all, I want to let you guys know that I started following your podcast since January and haven't missed one since. Well, welcome aboard. I've been playing League of Legends since season three and have been hard stuck gold in the past seasons. This year, I made some changes to my play style. I now give less importance to kills and have focused on my farming, wave control, and looking at the main map every chance I can. I also buy a pink ward or two every time I back as well as kind of abusing the meta, sorry, not sorry, when I started my rank climb this season. With a duo friend, we managed to go 36 wins with 7 losses on ranked games and finally got to plat this season. I still know I need to improve on a lot of things, but I definitely feel like the sum of all these little changes helped me become a better player. I still have a lot to learn about matchups and improve on my decision making, but I feel that many people think the climb to plat is skill-based, but I think it comes down more uh, it comes down to more game knowledge slash smart play. What do you guys think? Keep up the quality podcast. Your friend, Rondold McDonald. Um, I mean, honestly, yeah. I think there are a lot of players who don't necessarily climb because they're mechanically skilled and can outskill their opponent. But knowing where to be at the right time, what to build, 
like what's a skill even in some matchups is more important than you know mechanically outplaying yeah there's tons of dog shit players at high low (laughs) true yeah and i think that you can get very high on the ladder having only one of those skills but i think it's a lot easier to develop like general game knowledge and like matchups and that kind of stuff because like you can just like look up the answers for a lot of that stuff you know you want to be like okay who's good in this matchup i can just google that i can't just google how do i do a perfectly executed like ribbon animation cancel on cue and then actually apply that to my game instantly yeah it's one thing to be able to do like a one part game plan combo but to pull it off in game is an is entirely different thing I mean, but having that ability separates you from like other game plan players. Yeah, I guess I also want to mention like look at uh, Rift Rivals where like they had the randomized teams of like kind of pro players, high elo players, some content creators, whatever. The teams that I found did the best were the teams that had like uh, I think Scar and Especials teams uh, were the two. Yeah. Where those yep. players, Scar and Especial, they used to obviously be pro players, but they're I'd say at much lower skill level than a lot of the one tricks uh, pro players, etc. that were in the tournament. Like I think they're better than some of the content creators, but for the most part, they weren't the best players. But their teams did way better overall because they had like game knowledge and stuff that other players didn't, and that really helped carry their teams to, uh, to victory a lot of the time. Yeah. I mean, itemization, I feel like, personally, is such a vastly under-valued like valued skill to have. Because knowing what item to buy at the right time against specific champions can single-handedly win you a matchup i mean so like, they talked about I, I actually i listened to some like league podcast nick this kind of is on mm-hmm. your point sorry to cut you off um no go ahead go but ahead. uh on listen to loka they were talking about thor and loko and ls were talking about it and about itemization from players and a lot of the time they're not going to make the ideal purchase well not a lot of yeah. time but sometimes right so like you'll see people like flame about like itemization like you should have bought this because it's more gold effective based on whatever they're not gonna fucking choose that like with a split second decision in a match right you fucking you can't waste time calculating the purchase right that being mm-hmm. said you look at fuck who is the pro player in lck uh who was an 80 i think is an 80 carrier mid where they bought all three lifeline <laughs> items oh yeah true like shit, like I think it was. I, fuck, who yeah, was I think it? It was an eighty carry. It was <laughs> where they bought uh, uh, Ma, Ma, Ma Sterix and uh, uh, Fan Man. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it's like like shit, like that. Fuck, dude, like that's stuff that you have to like at least be able to do, right? Like, yeah, for sure. Completely like uh, optimizing, like min maxing, whatever it is based on the damage they have and based on the items everyone has. Less important. But holy fuck, you have to at least know shit like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I don't mean like, okay, I'm gonna plug these numbers in and see what I cut, what I get. But it's like, I'm the all right. So you you, you want to build an armor item, and you're playing against Yasuo and Jin. Maybe you go Randuin's instead of Deadman's play. Mm-hmm. Like both good items, both pretty appropriate for the situation. But one of those items is just gonna perform better because of like what it does. And knowing that, I think can give an extra edge. Once you start getting to the point of like, okay, there's not much else I can improve on, like improve on itemization. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you continue to climb and keep us updated. Uh, but that'll do it for episode 374. I think I said it right this time. I think the past two weeks I've had it wrong. Yep. So. <laughs> uh, I think this one's right though. I think you're right. Uh, follow us on Twitter at LeeCast and at LeeCast Frost. On Facebook, we are LeeCast. TeamSpeak, ts.leecastpodcast.com is where we hang out most of the time. Um, Discord, you can acquire from sending us an email, and you can send us the emails at mail at leadcastpodcast.com. Oh boy. Um, Twitch.tv slash blue basket and slash king, Ardout, king lardout are where we stream. And finally, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash leadcast. Thank you guys for listening, and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.